In JavaScript, a memory leak occurs when a program continues to hold references to objects that are no longer needed, preventing those objects from being garbage collected. And garbage collection is the process by which programming languages like JavaScript automatically reclaim or free up memory occupied by objects that are no longer in use, making it available for other parts of the program. If objects are not properly released, they can accumulate in memory, eventually leading to performance issues or even crashing the application due to running out of memory. Now, memory leaks in JavaScript can happen for various reasons. Let's explore some of them. Number one is improper management of global variables. In this example, you can see the sum is not declared with var, let, or const and directly assigned to a plus b. When a variable is not declared and assigned like that, it automatically becomes a global variable. Such variables reside in the global scope, and unless explicitly deleted, they persist for the lifetime of the application. This means that after the function has executed, sum is still accessible and taking up memory. To fix this, you can declare such variables, the sum variable in this case, with let, const or var to ensure that they have the correct scope and don't unintentionally become global. Now the sum variable won't be accessible outside the calculate sum function and it will be properly garbage collected after the function's execution. Number two is closures. We know closures allow inner functions to access variables from their outer functions, even after the outer function has finished executing. While closures provide this functionality, they also come with a responsibility to manage memory properly. Consider this example. Here, countdown from 10 is a closure that holds a reference to the count variable. Each time the closure is called, it decrements the count variable. As long as countdown from 10 is active, for example, as a callback or within an event listener, the count variable will not be garbage collected even if there are no other references to the create countdown function because countdown from 10 is a closure that maintains a reference to the count variable this reference keeps count in memory even though create countdown has finished executing as long as countdown from 10 exists and holds a reference to the inner function count will not be garbage collected because of course countdown from 10 needs the count variable to decrement its value so in such a case, because JavaScript won't garbage collect or remove the count variable from the memory, we have to do it on our own. We can do that by breaking the reference to countdown from 10 by setting it to null once we are done with using it. And this would indeed allow JavaScript to garbage collect the count variable as well since there are no other references to it. However, do note that once you set countdown from 10 to null, you lose the ability to call the countdown function. So you need to carefully manage the lifecycle of closures to avoid memory leaks while ensuring you don't unintentionally break functionality in your application. Number three would be timers and callbacks. JavaScript provides set timeout and set interval functions that allow you to execute code asynchronously after a specific duration or at regular intervals respectively. When you use these functions, you often pass a callback function. If the callback function references any objects, variables or functions, those references will be preserved as long as the timer is active. This can accidentally keep objects in memory, preventing them from being garbage collected, even if the rest of your application no longer needs them. Consider this example. Here, the setInterval function updates the car data object every 5 seconds. If at some point, you no longer need to update car data, but you forget to clear the interval, it continues running. This keeps the car data object in memory, preventing it from being garbage collected. Now to fix this issue and prevent memory leak, make sure to always stop timers when they're not needed. If you're done with an interval or a timeout, clear them using clear interval or clear timeout respectively. This action stops the timer and allows any referenced objects within its callback to become eligible for garbage collection, provided that there are no lingering references. Then in number 4, there's event listeners. When you attach an event listener to a DOM element, it creates a binding between the specified function and that element. This binding means that even if the element is removed from the DOM or you decide you no longer need the event listener, if you don't explicitly remove the event listener, the associated function remains in memory. This function can retain references to other variables and elements if it utilizes any within it, preventing them from being garbage collected, leading to a memory leak. Consider the following scenario. In this example, the event listener function is still in memory, retaining a reference to the removed button. Even though the button is no longer in the DOM, the event listener still exists and continues to hold the button in memory, causing a memory leak. To prevent this sort of memory leak, remember that you always remove event listeners using remove event listener before deleting the associated element or when the event listener is no longer needed. 
This action breaks the binding between the event listener function and the element, allowing both to be garbage collected. Apart from that, you can also use the once true option to prevent memory leak in this scenario. If you know that an event listener will only be needed once, you can use the once true option when adding the listener. This automatically removes the listener after the event occurs, preventing any potential memory leaks. Now in number 5, there's WebSockets and external connections. WebSockets, as well as other persistent external connections like server sent events or long polling, establish long-lived connections between the client and the server. While these connections are essential for real-time applications, they can lead to memory leaks if not managed properly. If these connections are not closed appropriately, any objects, callbacks or closures tied to their event listeners can't be garbage collected. This situation occurs because the connections maintain references to these objects even after they are no longer needed preventing them from being cleaned up. Consider the following example of a WebSocket connection. If, at some point, the user navigates away from the part of the application that uses this connection or closes a UI component that relies on this connection, but the WebSocket is not closed explicitly, it remains open. The event listener function continues to exist, retaining references to objects and variables in its closure scope, which prevents them from being garbage collected. To prevent memory leaks in such situations, you can always close WebSocket connections or other external connections using the close method when they are no longer required. This action ensures that the connection is terminated properly and releases associated resources. You can also nullify resources, meaning that after closing a WebSocket connection, nullify any resources to the connection and its associated event listeners or callbacks. This step allows the garbage collector to reclaim memory associated with these objects. And you can also implement error handling to detect when a connection is lost or terminated unexpectedly. When errors occur, clean up any related resources and nullify references to prevent potential memory leaks. Now number 6, the last one, which is detached DOM elements. When you remove a DOM element from the document, but still hold a reference to that element in your JavaScript code, you create a detached DOM element. These detached DOM elements are no longer part of the visible document, but continue to exist in memory because your JavaScript code maintains a reference to them. As a result, these elements cannot be garbage collected, leading to memory leaks. In this example, the item variable initially holds a reference to a DOM element. When you remove the element from the DOM using the remove method, you might assume it's gone, but the reference in item still exists. You can see in the console, the item variable still holds the element despite of being removed from the DOM. The element is now a detached DOM element. As long as item retains a reference to the element, it remains in memory, even though it's no longer part of the document, thereby causing a memory leak. To avoid memory leaks in such a situation, you can simply nullify references where after removing a DOM element from the document, make sure to set any references to that element to null. This action breaks the reference between the JavaScript variable and the detached element, allowing the garbage collector to reclaim the memory occupied by the element. You can also limit the element references, meaning you can store references to DOM elements only when necessary. If you need to perform a single operation on an element and don't require it afterward, avoid storing a long-lived reference to it. Instead, perform the operation directly on the element without storing it in a variable. And this, all in all, are some ways to identify and prevent memory leaks in your JavaScript application. If you found the video insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe.